Hey guys, it's Princess P from Cannabis DC. I'm doing a Q&A today to answer questions that people might have about edibles, topical, and tincture. Um, so yeah, let's get into this. This is train wreck, by the way, in case anybody was wondering. Um, in an organic raw cone. Um, Okay, so one of the first questions that I got was about topical bombs. How likely are topical bombs or how likely are the use of topicals to show up on a drug test? Not at all. Um, they shouldn't show at all. They don't absorb into the bloodstream the same way that smoking or using edibles or tincture does. Um, so topical bombs should absolutely never, never, never get you high, ever. Um, anyone who advertises it as something that gets you high, it's not a, I would question that. Um, so topical bombs, stuff like bath bombs, body lotion, I'm trying to think of some of the stuff that I make, um, sugar scrubs, bath salts, like actual bath salts, not that crazy drug that makes you hallucinate and see shit um, and eat people. Um, Anything like that, anything that's like going on to the, like a topical use of cannabis should not absorb into your skin and shouldn't show up on a drug test. Um, so this is especially beneficial for people who need the pain relieving aspects of cannabis, um, but who work in a job maybe that even if you're in a, a legal district, they can still deny you um, a job for testing positive for cannabis. So that's one of the many problems of prohibition. So yeah, but topical bombs should never show up in a test, so shouldn't have any worries about that. The next question is a couple of questions, so I'll answer them one at a time. So uh, I'll start with the, um, the topical question, since the first one was a topical question too. What's a good bomb for joint pain in the knees? Um, any solidly done topical balm that includes cannabis um, should work. I know um, with the one that I make, it includes a blend of herbs other than just cannabis, and it also includes essential oils and a few other things. So um, a really good basic balm that you can make yourself without cannabis um, is a turmeric, ginger, and cayenne balm, and it's really good if you don't want to use cannabis for whatever reason, like if you are just totally against it. Like I said, they don't show up in drug screenings, so um, shouldn't really be too much of a concern, but if you're concerned, um, just shoot me a message, and I'm more than happy to give you a recipe for a super basic balm that has cayenne, um, ginger, and turmeric, um, but for the most part, any quality topical balm, um, and this is super controversial, but I'll just say it anyway. In my opinion, a super quality topical balm includes the full spectrum of cannabinoids, which includes THC. I'm not hating on CBD balms. I think they're great for a specific purpose, but I think when it comes to the um, long term of keeping the inflammation down and um, keeping the pain contained, I think that including all the cannabinoids is best. So in my opinion, the best kind of topical balm is one that has all the cannabinoids, including THC and CBD, but um, some of that's just going to be trial and error. If you're in a place like DC where it's legal, but it's still not really being um, regulated, so most anything that you try is either shipped in from somewhere or made by somebody locally. It's sort of hard to say like which one is best, but um, I just know that when I made mine, nobody else had topical bombs, at least that was around. So I, I genuinely just made it for myself and it was a pretty life-changing experience. So, and I've improved on it since I first started making it. So, um, it's something you can definitely make for yourself. It just takes practice and sort of knowing what herbs and spices and essential oils besides cannabis, um, go well in a balm. Um, okay. So next question, can I catch a buzz with tinctures?
Yes. Um, so here's the thing with tinctures. There are a lot of people who swear <laughs> that their tincture will can get you high with like one drop. I'm gonna I have tested many people's tinctures, including my own. I have never gotten high from one drop. Not ever. And if they're talking if it's a fully thick sludge, absolutely no alcohol left in it, no Everclear extract, no solvent left in it whatsoever, then it's FICO not tincture. And in that case, a drop would probably get you pretty high depending on your tolerance. But um, for standard tincture, you can get high, not from one drop. Um, I know for me, it usually takes me about a third of an ounce to get high if that's my goal from a tincture or if I just really need to sleep or relax. And so when I say the goal of getting high, for me personally, it's not recreational, but for other people it is, and that's fine. I don't, recreational or medical, I don't really care either way. But for me, when I say trying to get high, it means I'm trying to go to sleep. I'm trying to have that full body relax. I need the high feeling. I know that in order to get me to where I'm trying to get, I need to be high. But th but for the most part, I don't really use tincture to get high. I um, microdose tincture, so I use, which I'll get to that in actually another question that I have coming up, but short answer, yes, you can catch a bunch from tincture, um, but the side to that is that you need to know how to dose it if that's what you're trying to do. So I'm going to, this person had a third question, but I'm going to go back and answer the other two questions first. Okay, um, and two of these are, these are by two different people. One of them asked, what's the average dosage of a tincture? And then the other one asked, yes, what is the average dosage? So, yeah. Um, okay, so here's the thing for a tincture, <coughs> and really all sorts of cannabis, so you really understand this. Dosing depends on the person. 100%. Depends on the person, depends on what you're trying to do, and it depends on how quickly you need it to happen. So for tincture, for example, I use it daily um, as an assist for my anxiety and for chronic pain. I only use three to five drops in my tea or coffee in the morning, um, and then I use an additional three to five drops about two hours later in my smoothie. Um, that's what I do, um, it's helped my anxiety. Some strains are better than others for that. Um, the ones that tend to help my anxiety don't tend to help pain. So sometimes the one that I do in my tea is not the one that I do in my smoothie. But um, that's considered like microdosing. So I'm microdosing the cannabinoids into my system. It's not going to get me high. It has never gotten me high, um, the three to five drops anyway. <coughs> but it helps for sure with the anxiety and the pain management on not a flare-up day. Um, so dosing, if you're trying to get high or if the goal is to get super pain relief, help you sleep, all of that, that's really going to depend on the person. And what I usually tell people is start with five to six drops and every 15 to 20 minutes go up another three to five drops. Um, because tincture, unlike with regular edibles, because it absorbs into your system differently, it doesn't take as long for you to feel it. So if you had a drink that had tincture in it, you're going to feel that within 15 to 20 minutes typically, whereas with a, an edible, say a brownie, it can take you up to an hour. I had one that took almost two hours to hit, and I really was just had just resolved that I wasn't even going to get high at all from this brownie or cookie. It may have been a cookie, but regard it was a cookie. It was a snickerdoodle, I remember now. So um, I ate this thing thinking that like, oh, you know, this is about 50 milligrams. It should work. Well, <coughs> it took almost two hours, and then when it hit, it hit. Um, it was kind of like this slow high for like the first hour. The second hour, it was another little bit of a slow high, and then bam, like stupid high. So... Tincture is similar, so I say start with five to six drops and then go up from there. And if your goal is to try to get high, start with maybe a teaspoon and go up from there. Um, 
teaspoon at a time every 20 minutes or so until you get the desired effect that you're looking for. I have known people that have drank an entire ounce in one sitting. I don't think any of them really did much to tell about it other than like pass out. Um, so that's the thing, even with edibles and with smoking, with any kind of cannabis, once you overdo it, once you like cross that threshold of too much, it doesn't really matter whether it's a sativa or an indica at that point. In my experience, um, at that point, you're just oversaturated and you're just going to go to sleep. Um, you're not going to die. It's just weed. Um, but yeah, like even yesterday, actually, with this train wreck, I overdid it, like way overdid it to what I should have used. And um, I ended up just getting like really, really high and felt like I wanted to go to sleep. Um, so I got that real heavy body high, you know, but that's not normally what Trainwreck does because it's a sativa. So usually it gets me like kind of hyped and energetic and talking a lot like I'm doing right now. Um, but yeah, I overdid it and I felt like I wanted to sleep, but I ended up being able to push through it because I was out. And then after a while, it's sort of like once the like high started to kind of go away, it then it navigated into like the energy you know, high, the sativa energy uplifting kind of high. Um, so dosing really depends on person. What I smoked last night that got me well past the point that I was like ready to go to sleep from a sativa, um, big worm would have, it would have had to be like five or six times that for him to even feel it. So it definitely depends on person. Tincture wise, I know that a teaspoon maybe a little more than a teaspoon, but generally speaking about a teaspoon, I'm going to start feeling the tincture. If I'm really like trying to get really high then a tablespoon, but if I consumed a drink with a whole tablespoon, which is like a third of an ounce, um, I would pretty much just go straight to sleep. So, um, Let's see. Okay, so those are the tincture questions. And then this one was, what strains do you recommend for muscle spasms? Um, OG Kush is pretty good at making you feel really sleepy. A lot of the Kush strains are. Um, and the thing is with muscle spasms, is it, this is kind of a loaded question because it depends on the root cause of the spasms. If you're just, if relaxing your body helps the muscle spasm stop, then heavy indicas are going to be the ones for you. Um, Bubba Kush, OG Kush, um, nine pound hammer, which we're growing right now. Um, but yeah, pretty much any of those like real heavy Kush strains that just make you want to sleep, that should help. Uh, I would do some research on Leafly. And then if you actually just Google um, like best strains for whatever, Make sure that whatever pops up is from a reputable site. So Leafly, Herb, High Times, um, something like that. Those three are really good about getting good info out there and good articles. So I would bet that one of them probably has it. But um, for me, for example, I do get muscle spasms in my back occasionally as a result of one of my nerve problems. Um, one of my problems, it could be the nerve problem, it could be the one of the other problems. Anyway, um, I know that when I put, uh, I put my topical balm on, um, and then I usually microdose about 10 drops of a heavy indica tincture. And that usually relaxes me enough that, um, the muscle spasms stop, but I don't get high. So, um, let's see, what was the other question? What is wax, dabs, and moon rocks? Okay, so wax and dabs, that's kind of a, a low. Dabs is taking a dab, which is using a dab rig. It's a concentrate to take a dab. So wax is a type of concentrate, but the only difference between wax and shatter, which is what people talk about a lot, is the processing. Otherwise, they're the same. They're both from BHO, typically. Um, and yeah, so, um, moon rocks are a piece of bud rolled in concentrate and then rolled in keef. Um, 
I could be wrong. Some of these like dab related questions, I don't really dab. So if any of our viewers leave a comment below, if I'm totally fucking this up right now, that's cool. Just let me know. Um, I watched a video about the difference between wax and shatter. And that's the only reason I know that they're the same thing, except for one is, um, one you can see through and usually is slightly harder in consistency, but that basically they're the same. They're both BHO usually, and then it's just the processing either accidentally or not that determines whether it's wax or shatter. I'm actually going to look for that video and I'm going to link it below. So if you want to go watch that video about concentrate specifically, um, go look down below. Um, let's see another question. How do you know how many milligrams you need. Okay. So this sort of goes back to, I kind of already answered this. So I'll just sort of refer back to what I already said about how everything it's different for every person for edibles. Specifically, the general rule is if you've never done edibles before is to start at 10 milligrams and then go up by 10 milligrams until you get the desired effect. Um, I know that in my case, if I overdose by even 10 milligrams, I'm well past saturation and I'm about to just go to sleep. Um, but so start at 10 and go up. I know for me, um, I was thinking that the 50 range was pretty good, but that tends to oversaturate me. So I feel like the 30 to 40 range is better for me. Um, and I say 30 to 40 because part of that depends on the strain that it was used for, I think. Um, but generally 30 to 40 is my like happy place. And then anything I, even though I am an idiot and usually go for 50, um, or more when I'm really being an idiot. Um, so start at 10 milligrams, go up from there. A lot of that has to do with how much you consume already. So what your tolerance level is, your weight, um, can definitely be a determining factor. Um, I know that not always, but frequently bigger people take more milligrams, like if they already have a high tolerance, if you've never done anything at all, it doesn't really matter in my experience about, uh, how many milligrams will affect you. However, there are people who swear no matter what, they can't get high on edibles. And, um, usually I tell those people to go try tincture because, um, again, in my experience, people who seem to not be able to absorb edibles through their gut, air, you know, their gut seem to be able to absorb it through their blood, which is what tincture does. So, um, edibles made with, you know, infused butter, infused oil are digested differently and they absorb into your system differently. So there are people there's, I heard some stoner rumor about it having to do with whether or not you had IBS, whether or not that's true. I don't know. Um, and, and I'll preface that by saying anytime I do these Q and A's that, um, anytime that there's a link to something, I'll link it below, but there's so little that we know for sure, because there's so little studies that have been done because of prohibition. So as it's being legalized more and more, and as more studies are being done, we're getting more solid information that we didn't necessarily have before. So anytime that I have a cool study that I can link down below, I will. Um, but yeah, so if edibles have never worked for you, try tincture. If you've never done edibles before, start at 10 milligrams and go up. Let's see. Can I make cannabis tea? So, yeah. So, THC is not water soluble. I'm a little high, by the way. So, at this point now, is probably when my words are going to start getting a little twisted. Um, so, THC does not uh, is not water soluble. So, if you make tea with even if they're decarbed, cannabis bud, trim stems, whatever. There are supposed to be no psychoactive effects in that tea, but there are the other cannabinoids or most of the other cannabinoids. Um, and so it does have benefits and there's a long history of people actually making tea with cannabis. I have a link about that. I will put it in the description below. Um, and I'm really huge on herbal tea. I drink different herbal tea blends. I make herbal tea for people. Um, you know, that. I mean, herbal tea is my thing. So I've definitely made cannabis stem tea, root tea, a few other things. Um, but 
Um, so I've definitely made cannabis tea before with the roots or the stems or, the, you know, whatever. I've done that. And I, I'm not going to, the thing is that it says there's no psychoactive effects, but at least on two different occasions, I felt like I was really high, like an hour later, like had totally forgotten about the tea. And then all of a sudden I was like, damn, I feel really high. And it, and then I thought about it and was like, the only thing I had was the tea, but According to what I know, that shouldn't be the case, so I'm definitely not going to tell you that drinking tea is going to, like, affect you psychoactively, but there are, um, believed to be lots of other cannabinoids that we will benefit from using it in a tea, or a smoothie if you want to get, like, if you have access to fresh fan leaves, um, like, if you have a friend that's a grower, especially if they grow organic, if they don't, and this is sort of a moot point, but, um, if they grow organic and they have fresh fan leaves that they maybe are going to cut down, they're going to trim off, because that happens, um, most, just ask them for some, and add them to your smoothie in the morning, you can get all those cannabinoids with some greens, it's great, there's so many vitamins in fan leaves, again, we'll link that below, but, um, if you're trying to get any sort of psychoactive effects from tea, then what you would want to do is make a basic tea and then add tincture. Um, if you don't want the psychoactive effects, then make tea. There's nothing wrong. You know, there's nothing that's going to happen from that. Who, this uh, next question, who makes the edibles tincture and topical, you or Big Worm? Um, I make the topical bomb. I make all the edibles. Um, he usually is the one who makes the tincture. Sometimes I make it, um, if, especially if it's um, an herbal blend. Like I made some tooth pain drops. I did that. I made that one. Um, I've done a couple of other herbal tinctures. The glycerin tincture that I'm working on right now, that one I did. But And it's not because he knows how to make tincture and I don't. It just tends to be that when he's over at our bar, which is where we have like our, you know, decarber and all that stuff, um, I'll say like, oh, hey, we need some tincture. Could you make some tincture? And then he just will, or he'll bring it up and be like, oh, we're low on tincture. I'm going to make some, but I've definitely made it too. That that's kind of like his contribution to this side of like the stuff that we make and do. Um, so generally speaking though, it is me. Um, and I don't think, I think he could probably could make the topical bomb with instructions and a list, but um, at this point, I don't even need my book to see the ingredients anymore because I've done it so many times and I know all the measurements. Um, and I, I make them small batches at a time, so it's not like I'm making some big batch and then I give it away and then I have to make another big batch. I make small batches at a time, so... Um, next question. Why is decarbing necessary for edibles? Okay, decarbing is necessary for edibles because if you don't decarb, then um, you don't activate the THC. So you won't get any psychoactive effects. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the answer to that. I will put a link down below about decarbing. But uh, I'm trying to see if there's any more questions. I don't think so. I believe that that's it. So before I finish up this video, this is like days later, if you can't even tell, I've dyed my hair since I shot the video, um, but, and excuse the mess, I've been like cleaning my house all day, and like, I'm a mess, this isn't even my shirt, this is Big Worm shirt, but it was in the dirty clothes, and I didn't want to dirty up my clothes to clean my house, so hot mess moment right now, but uh, I found a few more questions, and so I just wanted to answer those. Um, so that we weren't um, missing anyone. So, okay. A few of the other questions is, are tinctures, bud, or topical bombs best for muscle spasms? I pretty much answered this. In my opinion, although I didn't answer it about bud, in my opinion, all three are equally good. I don't really know. It, best is going to depend on the person. So what's the person, what is, what's best for that person? Um, if you want to know personally about what's best for you, you're welcome to private message me anytime and I'm happy to discuss the specific symptoms or your history or whatever to try to give you the best advice that I can based on 
your personal experiences and your personal symptoms because that absolutely makes a huge difference. Um, how much bud goes into a bottle of tincture and how do you figure out the dosing? Um, we use the Green Dragon method for tincture. You can look it up, but I will put a link down below uh, along with all the other links. Um, and um, so for regular dose tincture, it's um, seven grams for two cups. For double strength tincture, it's 14 grams to two cups. So, um, and then how do you figure out the dosing? I'm going to be totally real with you guys. Okay, I have <coughs> dyscalculia, which is dyslexia for numbers. Anything to do with numbers is extremely hard for me. Um, like, I I mess up numbers all the time. Like, if you're one of my Facebook friends and you're in my private group, if you're like a DC local, then you know all the many stories of me fucking up how much oil I put in something or the amount or whatever and ended up with double strength or triple strength or whatever. It happens all the time because I fuck up numbers constantly. So, um... He figures out all the math for the dosing. I I kind of understand it, but I'm always afraid I'm going to fuck it up. So um, I will leave a link below with the detailed explanation of it. I'm not going to even try to pretend to explain it to you. Um, I know that for the double strength, it's a one gram to one ounce ratio. So if it is 20% THC, then that one ounce from that one gram is... 200 milligrams. So, aha, did, am learning something. But, yeah, I'm not, you know, everybody has their strengths and weaknesses, and when it comes to um, milligram math and all that, that's just not mine, because math and numbers in general are not mine. Um, the only reason I figured out baking is be from lots and lots and lots of practice. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I'll leave a link below. Um, can you use tincture in baking? You can for something that you would use alcohol in um, or another form of liquid. If I've used it um, in place of vinegar. I've used it in place of alcohol. Um, I make a really good infused teriyaki sauce and I use it in place of, I use it in that. So um, you can also like convert it into infused sugar, um, which is not that hard to do. You can look up uh, how to make green dragon sugar and that's basically what it is is infusing sugar and that makes it a lot easier to bake with it um, I do know that there are people that use just direct tincture and baking but in my opinion baking is so precise and it's a science and it has to be like dead on you know like if it calls for a teaspoon of this and you put a tablespoon you probably fucked up um, so you can use it but it just depends on the recipe um, I would like to know the basics of turning flowers into edibles and topicals, multiple extraction methods. That is way too long of a subject for me to answer in this Q&A. I am more than happy to do a video on how I make oil and butter. Uh, I'm even more than happy to do a video on how I make tincture, like or um, topical. I, I don't mind. Um, so, and actually, since filming the first part of this video, my Topical Bomb won the second annual DC Capital Cup for Best Topical Bomb. So, I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, so, as far as multiple extraction methods, there are a lot. I'd, I could I, I could do a whole video on multiple extraction methods um, for cannabis, and I may do that. So, um, the next question will sort of help that question. So the next question was, is there a basic butter to flour mix or is that dependent on the potency of the flour? Um, there is a basic butter to flour mix. And so as far as turning flour into edibles and topicals, this is a good general idea. So um, for every pound of butter is one ounce of flour. So if you're making butter, um, then it's one ounce of bud to four sticks of butter. Um, if we're using trim, we do double for trim. So, and we have really good trim. Like I've smoked our trim. So like when I say trim, it's our trim from our grow. Um, so I've seen what other people have given other people as trim and it's mostly fan leaves. Um, and I, that's, does, that doesn't really count as trim to me. Trim is like the sugar leaf and like the little bits of the bud that you're cutting off so you get these real nice pretty buds. But I've smoked trim plenty of times and it's great. But we do double. 
So if I'm using trim instead of flour, um, then it's double, so it's two ounces of trim to one pound of butter. And the same goes for coconut oil. Um, although, if you use the magic butter machine like we use, um, then you're going to want to put about a quarter cup over the oil if you use coconut oil or olive oil because the magic butter, even on the lower temperature setting, does seem to burn off some of the oil and I tend to lose about a quarter cup to a half cup, so I compensate for that by adding an additional quarter cup into the recipe. Um, so if you're just trying to make like the equivalent of one stick of butter, then that's one, that's a quarter, so seven grams. Um, so I hope that that answered your questions. Um, I really appreciate all the questions that everybody asked me. I'm more than happy to do these more. I love shooting these videos. Um, if you are not a subscriber, click subscribe. If you want to get more videos from us, feel free to follow us on Instagram, um, Facebook, and Twitter at Cannabis DC. Um, if you really want to support us, we're working on starting a nonprofit, getting grow equipment and um, cannabis to low-income communities in D.C. for free. So if you're interested in supporting us on this cause of doing that, you can go support us on Patreon, which I will put a link to down below. Um, and you can support us for as little as $1, and 100% of proceeds from Patreon are going to fund our nonprofit. So, And I'm actually going to do a whole video on that um, soon-ish. So... Um, yeah, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to chat with you. Um, you can also follow me on Snapchat at Princess PDC. Um, if you want to follow all of my little things, I also, um, have my own Instagram at Adventures of Princess P. So, um, yeah, just follow us and reach out. You can reach out to me on Facebook anytime. My, um, cannabis related Facebook is Cannabis Princess P. Just shoot me a message and I'll be happy to add you as a friend. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. Bye. Stay lifted.